Alright, hello again. It's me, Kamran Zare, a teacher at Landrum Middle School here in Spring Branch ISD, which is in Houston, Texas. Uh, and we're at the uh, new Landrum Middle School instead of the old one. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you guys how to use a bandsaw. Alright? Uh, most bandsaws are pretty similar uh, in all the features. There's really no, no big differences between them. But this happens to be a Powermatic PWBS uh, 14, so it's a 14 inch bandsaw. All right. So, the way that I'm going to go through this is I'm going to talk about the parts, the individual parts. And then after I've talked about the parts, then I'm going to demonstrate how to use it and just uh, some simple techniques that uh, you, know, you might want to practice whenever you get to it. So, first of all, let's start with the parts, starting from the bottom. And so, you can't see the entire thing in the frame, but this whole machine is actually this tall. So it's sitting on a, a box which actually contains the motor, and this is our base. So this is the base of the machine. Coming up from there, we have some angle adjustment knobs underneath, which you can't see from that angle. But if I loosen these, what this allows me to do is it allows me to tilt the table. So whenever I push through the blade, I end up getting an angle. Cut. Okay. Coming up from there, we have uh, this fence rail right here, which these machines, you can use a fence, right? So you can get a nice straight cut going through the blade. The fence is put away currently. Uh, and then we also have the table, which is the flat surface that we're going to actually be uh, holding our piece of wood or our material on. On this table, we have a miter slot, so you can use a miter gauge on this machine. Okay. Before I get to this area, I'm going to switch over to this area. You can see that we've got the start and stop. So this is our power switch area right here. Okay. Uh, and then we have kind of the business end of this machine. So I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see. Right here, we have our blade. Okay. And it, this is very similar to a scroll saw uh, in, in idea, except what this is is one continuous metal band reason why it's called bandsaw, and this blade just goes around two wheels. There's the top wheel, and here's the bottom wheel. So they just spin and make this blade go all the way around. Okay. Now, inside the table, we have a table insert or a throw plate, and this is just a plastic plate that can be removed. So we have access to the lower guide down here, which helps allow the uh, blade to travel where we want it. And then if we have a lower guide, that means this whole assembly right here, this is the upper guide. Now, both the lower guide and upper guide, sometimes these things get a little bit thrown off when the blade starts to settle in the tire. However, these are things that students should not be adjusting. If something seems wrong or it's making some noise, you just make sure that you let me know. Okay? So, that is the upper guide. And then we also have a lamp here which helps us uh, follow our line so we can see it. Uh, it's important when you use a lamp, you want to make sure that your line that you're trying to cut is not sitting in a shadow or a shadow is not being created. Sometimes that makes it harder for us to see exactly what we're trying to cut. And then of course on the back side there's some tension adjustments. Those are things that my students don't need to worry about so I'm not going to discuss those right now. Okay? So let me recap the parts real quick without explanations. We've got a base, we've got some angle adjustment knobs, we've got a fence rail, we have a table, we have our power switch, we have our blade right here, we have our lower guide in the bottom, we have our upper guide in the top. This is called a throat insert or a table insert, throat plate, and then we also have a lamp. There's one other feature that is here that uh, I don't really think it's, it's, it's worth uh, a single ounce of anything and this is kind of an air hose it doesn't particularly work very well you're better off just blowing away sawdust with your mouth all right so those are the things that we need to be aware of so now let's discuss how do we actually use this machine so first thing before we use any machine in a woodworking shop we got to make sure we take care of wearing our safety glasses after you've got your safety glasses on, you want to make sure that if you've got long hair, you tie it back so it doesn't get hung up in a machine. After that, you want to make sure you remove any jewelry such as necklaces, lanyards, bracelets, 
rings, anything that's going to get caught in the machine that's dangling, uh, and that could be a problem. We don't want our hands getting caught in the machine. The next thing, any type of loose clothing that could potentially be caught in the machine, we need to remove that or tuck it in. And then, of course, if we're wearing a sweater or jacket, those things need to be removed so we can see from our fingertips to our elbows so there's nothing in the way to get hung up in the machine. Once we've taken care of that, we need to have some sort of plan before we get to this machine. All right? And so because I'm demonstrating, I'm going to demonstrate the fact that this machine is able to cut curves. Depending on the size of the blade, you can have a tighter curve or a, a larger curve. And it's able to cut notches or straight lines as well. So I'm going to cut a curve and I'm going to cut a large rectangular notch into this piece of wood using three straight lines and two 90 degree angles. All of this is just hand drawn, so it's not going to be perfect. I just want to demonstrate what you are going to need to know how to do when you use this machine. So, that's that. Once we have our plan, we want to get to the machine, make sure that it's turned off. We can see that it's not moving, it's not making any noise, so that's good. And if you want to use the light, now's a good time to turn the light on. <clears throat> then, the other thing is, this machine's connected to the dust collection system. So behind it is a pipe against the wall. We would need to make sure to open up the dust collector door and turn on the dust collector. Of course, the dust collector makes a lot of noise and it's far away for me to turn it on. And I'm not gonna do much cutting. I'll just leave my mess here and clean it up at the end. So I'm not gonna use the dust collector, but if you were to use this machine, you would need to make sure that you do turn the dust collector on. Now, when we use this machine, just like, say, the scroll saw, we need to make sure that we're standing directly in front of the blade, and we want to imagine ourselves looking at a line from the blade to the center line of our body. This is called the cut line, okay? So anytime we cut something, we want to make sure that we're following that imaginary line, so the line that is on our piece of wood that we're cutting, it needs to fall along that imaginary cut line. So I'm going to stand basically where this column right here, or this upper guide support, gets directly in front of my body, okay? Now, once I'm standing in the right place, I need to adjust this, because right now, I can't get my fingers through there, so I can't cut anything. So, what we've gotta do is reach behind, and there's this knob, okay? This knob currently is already loose, okay? So, I'm just gonna make sure that it's loose, and then I'm going to grab onto something solid that I can hold on to to raise the upper guide. Once I've done that, I'm going to take the material that I'm cutting and I'm going to put it outside of the blade, like so, on the side. Once I've done that, I'm going to take my smallest finger, which is my pinky finger, and I'm going to set it next to the blade and lower the upper guide onto my fingernail of my pinky. Then I'm going to reach back around and tighten this upper guide so that it's stuck in that position. Now, why did I use my pinky? Well, typically when you use a machine like this, your thumbs are things that are pointing towards the blade. And as you push through, if you're going to cut a finger on accident, it's probably going to be your thumb. And so my thumbs will not fit through here if it's sitting on top of the wood. My other fingers will have a hard time fitting through because they're much fatter than my pinky. Now, will it keep you from cutting your finger off? No. Will it help prevent you cutting your finger very badly? Yes, it will help. But the only way that you're going to keep from doing something wrong is to make sure that you're doing things safely and thinking your way through. But I like to keep the, the upper guide only the, the shortest distance uh, in my finger sizes, okay, away from my material. This gives me a chance to see, and it also gives me a chance to be able to have enough room, but still not push my fingers through. Now, once I've done that, the blade should be tensioned correctly, because Mr. Zari has already set it up, okay? Then, we are ready to cut. The first thing I want to cut is this curved line right here. Remember, anytime you freehand cut something, you never want to cut on the line. You want to just cut shy of the line. That way you can sand up to it later. So, once I'm satisfied with that concept, 
I'm then going to kind of visualize where do I want that blade to meet my line. Remember, this is an imaginary cut line. Anything that falls on that line is going to be cut. So since it's a curve, I have to imagine this as many, many straight short sections. And I want each one of those imaginary straight short sections to line up on the imaginary cut line. Now, when I'm doing this, it's really a good idea not to have the bulk of your material on the inside of your bandsaw area because if something goes wrong and I have to remove my hand, I can't go left or right, I have to pull straight back. If I turn my piece of wood this way, it's much easier because my hands can go everywhere except inside, so I can kind of escape much easier. So typically, we need to make sure that we have our hands outside the blade, and it's a good idea to always have two hands on your piece of material. Anytime your fingers are on top of this throw plate, you know that your fingers are way too close. Okay? So, once I've done all that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine on, and I'm going to push into the blade. It does not cut on the left or right, it's only cut from the front, and I'm going to go slowly, taking my time, and following the line. And so, since it's a curve, I have to push and turn all at the same time. Once I've cut all the way through, I'm going to go ahead and stop the machine, wait for the blade to come to a complete stop before I grab onto that piece of wood that is sitting there. Okay? So, once it comes to a stop, I can take this, this is trash, I'll throw it in the trash can, and now you can see that I have a curve. Now, this machine can tell you a lot by the sounds that it's making. If it sounds like it's struggling, that means you're doing something wrong. Remember, push into the blade, it does not cut on the sides or the back. So if you're pushing on the side, it's not going to do anything. It's going to start to whine and tell you it's not happening. Okay? So that's just cutting a lot. Now let's cut out this rectangular section here uh, to make basically a U shape in our piece of wood. Let me show you how this process is done, or let me explain it first. I have two vertical lines here. What I'm going to do is slowly cut down to this corner, and then I'm going to back all the way out. Then I'm going to slowly cut down to this corner, and then I'm going to back all the way out. So I have two out of the three lines already cut. Then i got to be able to cut this horizontal line here. I do not want to turn this piece of wood like I would do on the scroll saw because it's going to snap that blade off or it's going to come off the rollers because I can't make that tight of a turn. So what we have to do is a process of starting on one corner and cutting to the opposite corner to make kind of one line of an X. And then once we cut that section out, we're going to get our blade as low as possible down here and cut as close as we can to that line. Uh, if we can't, no big deal, right? Because then we're going to work from this side and do the same, and we're going to just keep cutting back and forth until we lower it. So think of it, we start off with a cross like that, and as we keep cutting, we end up with a flat section at the very bottom. So let me go ahead and attempt this. So I'm going to start with cutting my vertical line down to that corner, and then I'm going to slowly and carefully pull it back, making sure I don't pull the blade out. Then I'm going to do the same thing here, cut down to the corner, and then slowly pull the blade back. So I have two vertical lines. Now I'm going to start here and cut my way to this corner. So i got to turn it. So I've gotten rid of that section. Now I want to lower my blade as close to the bottom as I can and cut into this direction. So I'm going to swing this around, turn until I get to the flat line, cut all the way through. And so I have a 90 degree angle here, but I have a curve here. So, to get rid of this curve, all I have to do is hook this around the blade and follow that flat line all the way to that point. 
When I'm done, I have three black lines. Now, once I want to clean this out, clean this uh, machine up, I've got to wait for the machine to come to a complete stop. Once it stops, I can reach behind and loosen that knob to lower the upper guide, and then I should go ahead and remove everything from the table so I can clean it up. And the smartest thing to do, just blow all the dust onto the floor, grab a broom, sweep it up to the dust collector. Then I would turn off the light, and since I should have had the dust collector door open and the dust collector on, I'm going to close the dust collector door, and I'm going to turn off the dust collector. Pretty simple machine to use, however, if you're not paying close attention to where your hands are, you might run into some trouble. So, hopefully that's enough for you guys to be able to pass your safety test in my class, and for those people out in the world, for you to figure out how to use a bandsaw. So, good luck and thanks for watching.